Hello again, everyone. This is Gilmer, and this is episode one of my Wars of Succession. I will show you what I'm going to decide in just a second. I'm going to leave... I'm going to change the AI. I'm going to leave AI ranking on Sergeant. I won't put it to Sergeant. But I'm going to have an AI detect bonus plus one and activation plus one for the AI. And then plus they're getting more time. So uh, hopefully that'll make them somewhat uh, difficult, challenging. And it does say AI ranking. Uh, this can be challenging, although players with some experience of the game should be able to win the, over them without too much difficulty. But the thing I will say is I am going to be playing the smallest scenario because I've read up on this game on the forums and supposedly there are some bugs that I'm not sure that they ever ironed out because the last post was in November of 2019 and it seems like some of the bugs might still be in the game and it relates to replacements and maintenance of your troops because you pay a maintenance cost and I'm wondering if it's still in the game but I don't want to get into a big long uh, scenario and then find out that those bugs are still affecting the game so I might I'm thinking about playing one of these campaigns offline and uh, seeing if that is what happens but this also kind of frees me up to do other things I really want to go back to uh, Revolution Under Siege I really want to go back to um, To End All Wars I really want to go back to a couple of other things Probably not Civil War, although it seems like the Civil War 2 game gets a lot of views and a lot of enthusiasm. But, I mean, this is why I like Asia, though, is because they focus sometimes on, you know, conflicts that nobody else focuses on. You know, who else does a game of the Wars of Succession in the 1700s? Nobody. I mean, board games, you might find some board games that do it, but you're not going to find a computer war game that does the Wars of Succession. Um, you know, I mean, it might be kind of included in a Paradox game as kind of a scenario, maybe, or a smaller scenario, or, you know, it, it kind of is all encompassed in the main campaign of a Paradox game, but this goes specifically at the actual conflict of the Spanish succession in the early 1700s. So without doing too much more, I will say that I did already play this first term one time and I thought I was recording and I didn't, but I think you're going to thank me for it because I ha I didn't have the sound turned down. And the sound was loud. I wear headphones and I had to pull the headphones off my ears. It was so damn loud. So you will probably be happy that I'm not going to subject you to that uh, crescendo of sound from the first battle. Because it was, I'd say it was in the 180 to 200 decibel range at least, at the very least. I probably did do some minor damage to my ears for having the sound that loud. But anyway, this is a small scenario. As we spoke about before, this is a small campaign scenario starting in early summer of 1701 when Prince, Prince Eugene of Savoy, military commander of the Austrian forces, provoked French military involvement by invading the Duchy of Milan and started the real fighting of the Spanish Succession War and let's just go right into it. I'm playing the Grand Alliance, which is against the Bourbons, uh, against the grandson of Louis the Fourteenth becoming the Spanish Emperor. So let's click play. And I've already read this part for you. And as I mentioned in my Bloody Shiloh campaign, these are ways to filter your messages. So, 
You can have scripted messages, battles. We don't we haven't had a battle yet, so no battles, no movement, no replacements, uh, ownership. The Grand Alliance is now controlling the Kingdom of Austria. The Grand Alliance is now controlling Holy Roman Empire. The Grand Alliance is now controlling the Archbishopric of Salzburg. And the Bourbons are now controlling Kingdom of France and Kingdom of Spain. Excuse me. Let's go back here. Okay, this is this is the lead up to the whole Spanish succession. Charles II, King of Spain, has died without an heir. In his final will, he has dictated Philip, Duke of Anjou, grandson of Francis King Louis the Fourteenth, as heir to the Spanish Empire. This bodes ill for Europe, as fears of a personal union between France and Spain does not sit well amongst France's enemies, the English, the Dutch, and the Austrians. Austria puts forth an alternate successor, Archduke Charles. Tensions mount as Europe moves closer to war effects. Spain comes under the influence of the Bourbons. Anti-Bourbon sentiment increases by plus 15. Occupation of the Spanish Netherlands. At this point in time, Spain was an empire. It controlled the Spanish Netherlands and Spain, of course. And then it had vast areas of land that they owned in the New World, South America, uh, Central America, and uh, the Caribbean. In an effort to legitimize Philip V of Spain's hold over the Spanish Netherlands, King Louis XIV, and so Philip V is is his grandson. That's Philip of Anjou. So they, he's trying to legitimize his grandson as the Spanish emperor. So he sends French troops into the Spanish Netherlands to secure its barrier fortresses. Such an action extends Bourbon influence, but raises alarm in England and the United Provinces, which the United Provinces becomes eventually the Netherlands, and the Spanish Netherlands, I think, eventually becomes Belgium. I could have that wrong, so don't hold me to that, but I think that's what happens. Spanish Netherlands and the Bishopric of Liege are annexed by the Bourbons. Anti-Bourbon sentiment increased by plus 25. Alliance with Savoy. Victor Amadeus II, Duke of Savoy. Like I, I, I mentioned probably yesterday and I would, in my aborted attempt to uh, record earlier, uh, Italy is not unified yet, so there are a lot of duchies and things like that. And Savoy is a fairly strong duchy, and uh, probably not as strong as you know France or Spain, you know by itself. But it's still a fairly strong duchy, and you know help from the Dutch, the uh, help from the Duke of Savoy is probably pretty pretty big. I mean they can feel the a good size army. But anyway, Victor Amadeus II, Duke of Savoy, stands between France and the Spanish holdings in Italy, a previous enemy to France. The newly crowned King Philip V, the V of Spain, seals an alliance by marrying Amadeus's daughter, Maria Luisa, and paying hefty monetary compensation. Unfortunately, Amadeus cannot be considered reliable and may defect to the Austrian cause unless the Bourbons maintain a strong military presence. Savoy annexed by Bourbons costs 1,000 money for Bourbons, increases anti-Bourbon sentiment by 10. Now, Amade Victor Amadeus is supposedly a pretty close friend of Eugene of Savoy, who is the leader of the Grand Alliance's armies. So... I think when Victor Amadeus sided with the Bourbons, that kind of kind of annoyed Eugene of Savoy. But the reason they say Victor Amadeus might change sides is because he's friends with Eugene of Savoy and very friendly with, you know, members of the Grand Alliance. So that's why they think he might be unreliable. So and then this is the last one. From the death of Charles II, Holy Roman Emperor, Holy Roman Emperor, 
Leopold I began preparations for securing the Duchy of Milan from Bourbon influence. With French troops moving into northern Italy, Prince Eugene of Savoy is dispatched across the Alps, making concessions in secret with very various rulers in Venice to push back the French. So basically, he's talked with some of the rulers in that area, and they they basically said, yeah, it's okay to attack the French troops in Milan. Prince Eugene and a large Austrian army is formed in Trento. Verona is open for movement by the Grand Alliance. Entry into the duchies of Parma, Bandina, and Tuscany, as well as the Papal States, is for now forbidden. So, I want to recruit something. And if you click on this, it'll tell you the green areas is where you can recruit uh, certain units. Some units will not be available. I don't think you can build the Hungarian units anywhere. For some reason, it still shows as available, but I don't think you can. But I'm going to build this Grenadier. And before I do that, though, let's look at that. So to, to buy a Grenadier Regiment, it costs 1,000 pounds, 800 conscripts, war, war supplies 40, and it'll, it'll take 120 days to build. And as you can see, I only have 800 conscripts. So as soon as I say want to build it, this went down 1,000 because it's 1,000 pounds. 800 conscripts went down to zero. This, I think, was 30, I mean 300, and it went down to 260. And engagement points. Um, engagement points are what you use sometimes on historical options. If you have enough engagement points, you can uh, select a historical option at times. Uh, that's the strategic atlas decision mode okay as you can see I can do siege works mine wall hastily rebuild a wall around a defense a city scorched earth and reconnaissance I mean I don't really need to do that and I'll tell you why because I'm going to I'm going to attack this guy, Cat Knot, and I already know that his power is about twenty three hundred, and my power is thirty five fifty eight. How do I know that? Because I played the first turn of the main campaign, and in the main campaign, they actually have a, a regiment of cavalry down here screening this unit, so we can see it. It can see what this unit is made up of or that army is made up of. Okay. Now we can look over here. This envelope showing as open means that the officer, commanding officer is activated and that means I can perform offensive maneuvers which means I can put that on offensive posture which is what that is. So what that means is when I move here he will immediately, or you know, whatever delay there might be, some delay, uh, attack Catnot. He will attack Catnot, and um, it says it'll take 14 days. So sometime after the 14th day, when I arrive, we will fight a battle, and it usually is three to four days is how long they wait, and then a battle happens, and I usually win. Let's take a look at this guy. This is Eugene of Savoy. He is a very well-known historical figure. He was a very good general at the time. And as you can see, his rating, strategic five, offensive five, defensive four. The highest you can start with is six. And you very rarely see generals with sixes in any of these. But every now and then you will see one. Duke of Marlborough will shows up in the grand campaign and I think he probably has a six in what in some of these. But anyway, five five four is is excellent numbers. They are excellent numbers. And he also has these um attributes. 
and fast mover, 15% move bonus to all units of the stack under his command. And of course, he's commanding this army, so 15%. Now, one thing to remember, something to remember. If you watch my playthrough of Rise of Prussia, Frederick the Great, Frederick II the Great of Prussia, he was a fast mover. But if you have artillery or siege artillery in your army that can slow you down especially siege artillery so you need to think about that if you have siege artillery you might not go as fast as you expect admired commander this commander provides a plus 30 percent increase in fatigue recovery because he is beloved and revered by his men royal blood that means he's a prince and uh, that gives him plus 10 command points. Multinational commander, he can, uh, this is the Grand Alliance. So you're, he's going to be commanding possibly units of Austria, the Holy Roman Empire, um, and the Arch, Archbishopric of Salzburg, and other um, German type units. But uh, in, I don't know what language they spoke in Savoy at the time, but I'm sure he spoke German, but he can lead units of any nation with no penalty. And then he is a superior tactician, and that gives him an initiative bonus of plus one to all units under his command, which uh, helps out in battles. So this is, his, this is what I like to call the uh, game card of the unit, and... The general is just one unit uh, or just one person. So a general by himself in enemy territory can be captured or injured, I'm pretty sure. More likely injured. I'm not sure about being captured. I don't know if the game models a general actually being captured, but they can be d injured and actually killed. Uh, another thing to look at is if you hover over this, and if you look at this line right here where it says 41 units, power 35, 58, if you hover over that, it tells you essentially how many men is what would be uh, represented by these units. So he basically has 36,334 men, 18,738 horses, and 32 cannons. And if you select one of these, This is a Grenadier Company, the first of the eighth Grenadier, Grenadier Company Elite Infantry. And as you can see, this unit or this element has 200 men of 200 men. But it go, they go by the hits. So in the battle, he, if he takes three hits, that's considered he lost 60 men. And then you uh, try to replace those using the replacement screen. Which I don't think they're okay. Here are the um, yeah, here are the replacements. So this is Austria, this is a Holy Roman Empire. Currently, Austria has 19 chits, is what they call them C H I T S, and that equals usually it equals 50, 19 would equal 57 hits, and I showed you the hits on that element 10 of 10 so this should replace 57 hits and then for cavalry six chits uh, artillery three chits and then supply units and then ships naval units uh, buyer remove one placement at once click to change five placements at once okay so see I can Maybe I can't. Maybe this doesn't. Oh, well, I don't have any conscripts, and I think it does take, yeah, it takes 25 conscripts. So I probably am not allowed to buy any replacements at this point. Disable or enable the AI. Currently set with the AI by many replacements. Click to change behavior. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let the AI select or buy my uh, replacement. So anyway, let's go ahead and 
process a turn or proceed to next turn. And it's a 30 day turn. So it equals one month. Each turn equals a month. I think February is still 30 days. So we won that battle. We lost 3,095 men. They lost not 4,920 men. We lost 1,281 horses. They lost 10,000, uh, 1,037 horses. So really, this was a, a lot closer. We won this battle, but this was a lot closer than a battle that I played earlier that I tried to record and I didn't. This guy's name is a jawbreaker. Nicolas Catanat de la Faconieri. Senor de San Gratian. And apologies if I mispronounce that. I know it's a French name. I took four years of French and also I used to be able to speak it fluently when I was a kid. But I can't speak it fluently anymore. So that's the end of the turn when we did not win a national morale point for winning that battle. We did in my earlier play of the first turn that you did not get to see because I did not record it. But at least your ears are not being burst out because that first battle was loud. It was so loud. You'd have probably posted some really mean things to me if you had heard listen to that with the sound on normal because the sound on normal would have burst your eardrums uh this is just um we get plus artillery replacement plus one anti-bourbon plus one anti-bourbon sentiment uh bourbon succeeded in retreating from battle in cremona at day 18 hour three after taking 42 hits we captured 600 rifles and 100 prisoners uh, we did not gain a national morale point we got hit with the traffic penalty, which I went over yesterday when I talked about the options that we were playing under. And we got hit by 37 hits from foul weather, which kind of sucks. And then these are replacements. Uh, you can look at who received replacements. Looks like they're all getting replacements up here. So anyway, here is the unit we we uh, bought or are, we're raising. It's still it takes a few turns for it to build up before you can actually use it. You can move it. You can move it, as it says, it's static or very slow. But it's it's so bad. It's not. It's a power of three. It's worthless to move it at this point. So. Um, it's interesting to know, though, that when you raise a unit, it isn't immediately available. It takes time, like in real life, for it to build up over several months as you're recruiting the men, gathering their equipment, um, you know, training them up, that that sort of thing. And, I mean, four months, it, ta it that's what it says, four months. We've already been one month. And it says... Um, Yes, 87 days, so three more months, basically. That's Four months is pretty quick, if you ask me. But, yeah, whatever. Uh, it takes you four months to build up a unit, this unit. So, the next thing I want to do... So, I'm still, I'm still active. And as you can see, it says I have 35 command points being utilized of 58 that he can uh, command without a penalty to uh, to um, you know commanding it if he had 59 there would be a 5% penalty if, there was 50, if this number was 59 if it was 60 I think it would be 10, 9 or 10% depending on how the how they calculate the percentages but anything up to 58, he's going to be at 100% uh, 
efficiency and uh, we're going to go ahead and run another turn pretty quickly uh, wait a minute we haven't looked at this one uh, bah, 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 bah. Eugene has been congratulated for his actions against the enemy new seniority one and um, do we want to talk about seniority at this point we can we can so his seniority he started at two and now he's at one this the lower this number is the more seniority he has a seniority of one is the highest seniority you can get his pol political score is 52 points and as it says the politic rating determines how costly and victory points it will be to bypass this leader with a subordinate when creating armies so basically you let's look at you know two two star generals if one of these does well he can be promoted to a three star general but if the other one has a has a higher seniority and you still promote the one with the lower seniority or the I say higher seniority but it would be the lower number um, the one with more seniority if he's passed over you get they uh, it'll tell you it will cost you victory points and sometimes national morale as well so basically let's just say Lorraine well Lorraine has a seniority of one of two as well and then this guy has a seniority of one of two and this guy has a seniority of one and two well that's not very good for explaining it but let's just say let's say if we look to him and he had a seniority of where is, where is that? Oh, wait a minute. How did, oh, uh, I guess. His seniority is 65. This guy's seniority is 75. If he, in a battle, does so well that he could be promoted, his seniority, he's more senior than this guy. But if you promote this guy over this guy, it will cost you victory points and it will also possibly cost you national morale points and what that does is like if you have a real popular commander or somebody very politically connected or somebody very senior and he gets passed over it pisses people off and so it you know hurts your national morale so that's that's a very in a nutshell explanation of that we probably won't see it in this scenario but it does happen in, in games like To End All Wars in the, the main campaign, and probably in this main campaign as well. The longer the game goes on, the more chances you'll have to promote people to higher positions of power. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And I don't know if I talked about it too much, but I'm doing the, the shortest scenario I can to kind of free me up to do something else later and especially if I find out the the bugs that have been delineated on the forums are still affecting this it I don't think the bugs will hurt a smaller scenario as much as they would a larger scenario so that's why I'm part of the reason why I'm doing a short scenario oh wait a minute I want to I want to run this turn So that's not going to be the end of the video. Oh, he's at 1,400. Well, I'm at 3,000. <laughs>
in the um, in the transport units and transport them over here, which we which we will do. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Now well, let's see if that works. Nobody got congratulated for their battle. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so we're besieging this. The last time I played this, They immediately surrendered. So, and it it was like a scripted event. Um, so maybe the next turn they'll surrender and we'll get it. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll try to do a video tomorrow and also try to record a couple more videos tomorrow that I can post on Sunday and Monday. And um, thank you very much and I'll see you next time.